All right, I camped last night at uh, Well 30 and uh, I met a cool crew from Victoria while I was there. They were already set up and, and ready to go. They're riding uh, motorbikes across the Canning stock route with two support vehicles uh, behind. Uh, they're all from the same town in Victoria and uh, they've, they've been on the track now, I think they said 12 days. So uh, absolutely having a blast uh, as we all are out here and uh, really good crew of people. They um, welcomed me in, they even fed me. What a, what a bunch of champions, had a great feed with them last night. And um, yeah, beautiful campfire and a good yarn. And, and uh, this morning they, uh, they took off heading to uh, the Aboriginal community to refuel and resupply and, and have showers and, and freshen up a bit. I'm on my way to uh, Mujingara Cave, which is right off well uh, 30, and uh, I'm going to go check that out and see uh, see what's in these caves. I like uh, checking out caves. Um, plenty around the Pilbara, and, and every chance I get, I see a cave up a hill or a small mountain or something like that. I'll, I'll try and get up there. Oh, more chopped out bloody sand dunes. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to find in this cave. I, I didn't find too many photos uh, of what's in there, but uh, after uh, after checking out this cave, I am going to continue on uh, down to well uh, 29 and uh, continue making my way south. And I'm aiming to be at well 26 uh, tonight for, for camp. That one there is uh, another restored well or, or uh, not 
if not fully restored, it's oh, I'm told it's very nice and very good water there. So it's um, yeah, another good day of driving. The uh, the terrain's changed a fair bit. Uh, the sand dunes are fewer and far between. The ground is uh, pretty hard now. There's uh, rocky outcrops and uh, and it's slow going. You know, 20, 30 k's an hour, sort of average all day. Um, and uh, but there'll be you know a few more sand dunes uh, to go for the whole trip. But uh, yeah, they're starting to thin out and it's starting to get a bit more bushy. It's uh, the the starting to get sort of those um, I forget the name of the scrub. The um, we call it uh, like a salt bush, uh, a black bark salt bush. Um, and it's kind, it looks kind of like that. I, I don't know what its real name is, but uh, there's a few more wildflowers around as well. And uh, I'm starting to see some uh, desert peas. Uh, the motorbike guys last night showed me some desert pea uh, flowers that they, it's the first time they'd ever seen them before. Uh, and it sort of reminds you, you can take that sort of thing for granted. Uh, I grew up with desert peas all around me, um, so I wouldn't take a second look at that. But uh, they were they were showing me a photo and, and we're really impressed with how uh, how bright and colourful it was and um, that, yeah first time they'd seen one before so that's kind of cool and and that's why we all get out and explore uh, this great country of ours isn't it to, to find new things we've never seen before so all right well I'm almost at the cave so uh, I will show you around that if it's worth looking at otherwise I might just take a photo and continue on. Well, I went out and checked out the cave. Um, it just looks like a bit of a sinkhole to me. Uh, Without going down there, of course, and, and seeing whether it goes uh, anywhere, it just looks like a, a small three-meter depression in the ground where uh, probably some sort of under underwater underground stream or something like that has just made the top cave in on top of itself. So uh, yeah, it's it's sort of a five by five meter diameter hole by about two three meters deep. Um, not a great deal to see, so I've just taken a couple of photos and uh, yeah, I'll continue on. did a quick lap around Thring Rock, uh, took a couple of photos and, and videos. It's, it's uh, 
bit of a lonely feature out here with such a flat ground and, and sort of a bit of sand dune country. Uh, so you come up over this really nice sand dune and Thring Rock just fills your windscreen. Uh, so it, it's kind of a cool feature. It's, um, it's not that big a sand dune but you come up over the top of it and Thring Rock has just taken up the entire windscreen. It looks, it looks amazing. Yeah, worth a look. Check it out. So I just realised I made a bit of a, a mistake. I, uh, I thought well 29 was in front of me because I had my map zoomed out too far. And uh, so what I found out is that I missed it. If you do the uh, Thring Rock uh, bypass, you actually have to backtrack down the canning. Uh, only a small distance, only looks like a couple of k's uh, to get to well 29. So I've actually, I thought it was in front of me and uh, accidentally skipped it. So that uh, I won't have any photos or anything of uh, World 29 in this one for you, even though it's quite a quick and easy one to get to. I didn't realise until I was already 5Ks past it, so uh, sorry about that. I'll have to get it next time for you. just pulled up for a minute and because uh, I noticed my GPS wasn't working um, not quite sure what happened but I, uh, I I was logging my route and then I noticed I was no longer moving anymore on the GPS everything was still connected and, and showed working um, so I, I fired up my second GPS my backup GPS to see what was going on and sure enough I was a long way from uh, from where, well, not a long way, like three, four, four kilometres from where the GPS thought it was. So, uh, I've just restarted everything and, and got them working again. They, they seem to be doing the trick. 
I've uh, just pulled up at uh, Helen Hill and uh, I also had a look and I've done 820 kilometres. It's a 1600 kilometre track. So that means Helen Hill is roughly the halfway point, give or take, depending on how many side tracks that you do. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna, I haven't actually got anything to celebrate. I uh, drank the last of the wine last night with uh, my new friends from Victoria. And so I'm just gonna have a drink of water and that's it. Nothing, no, there's no chocolate, no sugar, no Cokes, nothing in this thing. There's just water and basic food. So it'll be a sad celebration, but a celebration nonetheless. So I'm pretty happy to be at the halfway point. Uh, it was a really nice escarpment that uh, I just went through. Uh, did a little bit of filming in the area. Um, yeah, we'll continue on now to uh, well 27 and I'm aiming for well 26 to be my camping spot tonight. I'm hoping to get there a little bit early, uh, but I'll see how I go. See how I go for time. It's already one o'clock. If I can get to well 26 by three, four o'clock, I'll be stoked. All right. Time to get out of here. How's it going? I've just arrived at uh, well 26, which is the halfway well uh, for the Canning Stock Route trip. Um, did a little celebration when I uh, covered halfway and really happy to be camping here because uh, I've got it to myself again. Really enjoyed camping with people last night, but I do prefer to be out here on my own. Beautiful restored section. Uh, the, the track care people should really be thanked profusely and, and I certainly thank them profusely for 
for what they've done for the Canning stock route in general and uh, what they've done for uh, this particular well that I'm at right now. Beautifully uh, appointed, uh, well, what's the right word? It's, a, it's an immaculate build. Uh, it gives you a real sense of uh, how it was in the days of Canning and uh, they've done a fantastic job of bringing it back to life. Um, there's a, uh, a cool little thing over there that I'll show you where you can sign a, uh, a welcome book. There's a replica of the camel water tanks sitting over there as well with some plaques and whatnot that I'm going to show you. But uh, yeah, check out this beautiful well. I put the drone up so you can have a bit of a look from the air. But fantastic timber work, all treated pine. Oh, look at that. Uh, I'll put some water in there so these boys have come for a drink. Pink glass. These things are all over the Pilbara. Some people hate them because they make quite a mess. I love them. I reckon they've got personality. He's looking at me, he's looking at the water. He wants the water. I will dump a whole heap more in there for him. Go on, little fella. I'm just watching. And I'll get in there with all the names. So, July 2011. All these people involved with uh, reconstructing and refurbishing this amazing well. It's the best one I've seen so far, remembering I'm coming uh, from the north, making my way down to the south. And uh, this is by far the best one I've seen so far. All right, I'm going to send, uh, send some water down to these coggies. Now, I've got to be particularly careful walking around these wells because I'm here on my own. So if I fall down there, there's no actual way to get out. I'd have to literally wait till someone comes along and that could be days. If you come into these wells, don't let the bucket just drop. Um, you want these things to last as long as they can in a pretty harsh environment, so give them the uh, best chance they've got by just lowering them down and picking them back up again. More than enough for a couple of cockies, that's for sure. So, it's something worth considering when you're out in the middle of nowhere like this is uh, when you are at well 26 you're about as far away from any major civilization as you can get in every direction 500 k's around there's, there's less than 100 people max absolute max at the aboriginal community a couple of hundred k's away there's 150 people other than that maybe 10 or 20 in the next 500 k's around um, 
you are really incredibly remote. This is true, proper overlanding, long range expedition overlanding. Um, and I absolutely love it. I wouldn't want to do anything else. Hopefully those birds have a nice drink. All right, so it's still a bit warm. Like this is the funny thing, right? It's winter. The last two nights it's got to nearly, uh, well, last night was five degrees, the night before was one. Right now it's about 30 degrees and uh, you don't have to do much to uh, break out in a sweat, especially when you're wearing full jeans and a long sleeve shirt ready for, ready for nightfall. So anyway, these birds are starting to get a little bit more brave. I'm going to um, shut up now and I'll uh, let them do their thing. season that we've had this year has filled up all the clay pans. <laughs> 